brothers and sisters. This comes from CNBC. U.S. workers are among the most stressed in the world. New Gallup report finds. And there are a number of factors that are contributing to this, especially to many workers deciding to quit their jobs. One of those factors, and this is the most important one, is the lack of pay. These employers are still operating under a slave-like mentality. I, I would call it even plantation capitalism. They want to work people as long as they can, as hard as they can, as much as they can for as little as possible. And the workers are simply fed up with it. And so now people are taking the advice of their supervisors. They're taking the advice of their bosses and are leaving. But now these supervisors and these bosses and these managers are upset with the fact that people are finally starting to wake up and are looking for other opportunities. But my thing about that is you can't be mad at your employees for doing what you told them to do. You told them if they didn't like their jobs, they can quit. And now they are quitting. So that one's on you. But if you had done more, if you had treated your employees better, maybe they would not be quitting. Another factor is lack of vacations. In the U.S., there is no federal law that requires employ uh, employers to mandate that your employees need to take a vacation. No laws in the U.S. that says that. Now, in other Western societies, like mostly in European countries, they do require you to take one. And your employer got to pay for it. But here in America, no, they don't believe in that, y'all. And this is just another reason why this system's going down. But let me read on. U.S. workers are some of the most stressed employees in the world, according to Gallup's latest State of the Global Work uh, Global Workplace Report, which captures how people are feeling about work and life in the past year. And there's another thing that is contributing to this. It's the excessive work hours. A lot of people out here simply can't make it on one job. So that... So we got to go out and get a second, third, some of us even fourth jobs in order to just be able to pay for our basic needs. Again, this is on the employers, y'all. U.S. and Canadian workers who survey data are combined in Gallup's research, ranked highest for daily stress levels of all groups surveyed. Some 50%... Yeah, some 57% of U.S. and Canadian workers reported feeling stress on a daily basis, up by 8% points from the year prior and compared with 43% of, uh, of people who feel that way globally, according to Gallup's 2021 report. This spike isn't surprising to Jim Harder, Gallup's chief workplace scientist who tells CNBC make it that rates of daily stress, worry, sadness, and anger have been trending upward for American workers since 2009. Concerns over the virus, sickness, financial insecurities, and racial trauma. That's especially true for black people here in America. All contributed to added stress during the pandemic. But stress spikes were especially accurate for women in the last year. 62% of working women in the U.S. and Canada reported daily feelings of stress compared with 52% of men, showing the latest impact of gendered expectations for caregiving in the household, ongoing childcare challenges, and women's overrepresentation in low-wage service jobs most disrupted by the pandemic. That is very true. That is very true. I mean, one thing this past year has given many of us, it hasn't given all of us this, but it's given many of us the chance to look back, to reflect, and 
really see if we really want to go back. Go back to these crappy jobs. And many people have said hell no. Especially women have said hell no. A lot of women are simply saying, look, I... I'm leaving the job force. I'm oh, sorry. I'm leaving the workforce forever, and I'm gonna let my significant other take care of everything, and we just gonna work it out. That's what's happening as a result of this. But again, this is the high IQ's fault, ladies and gentlemen. By contrast, the daily stress level for women in Western Europe went down in the last year, which researchers attributed to social safety nets for parents and workers to prevent unemployment. And while employee engagement dipped in the rest of the world, it rose to 34% in the U.S., the correlation of higher engagement but also higher stress can result in burnout and mental health challenges and indicates the intersection of work and life needs some work, Harder says. These scientists come at a time when younger generations expect their workplace to provide more value than just a paycheck. Harder says during Oh, sorry, Harder says drawing on previous Gallup research, and in turn, he says organizations have a responsibility to help improve employee well-being if they want to support a resilient workforce, improve learning and performance, and attract top talent. No, the issue is the pay, y'all. That's, that's really the main issue here. But reading on. He points to five elements workplaces can focus on to improve employee engagement and help individuals thrive. Career well-being, social well-being, financial well-being, physical well-being, and community. Stress in any of these areas such as financial stress due to inequitable pay or community stress due to an unsafe work environment can negatively impact a worker's mental health. That's very true. That's very true. But, you know, one other thing that impacts workers' health is dealing with racism on the jobs. Dealing with incompetent managers and incompetent bosses. Dealing with Karen and Ken on a regular basis. Those things, especially in places like the service industry, they can negatively impact anybody. But reading on, leaders can do an audit, like through surveys and focus groups to see if any of their company policy structures, communications, or programs negatively impact their employees. They're not going to do that. <laughs> And even if they did, nothing is really going to be gained from this, especially if the employees say, pay us more. Overall well-being, and when leaders introduce new programs or benefit, Harder says leaders should connect the value of them to those five elements so people understand why you're providing various benefits and why you're trying to provide an overall culture of thriving. No, they're not trying to... Uh, th they're not trying to look out for the well-being of their employees. At the end of the day, their employees are just another number put into a metric system. Okay, this employee does this, this one does that. This is how much we pay this one, this is how much we pay that one. That's all they are. It's just another number. Hell, a lot of these managers who run these businesses don't even know the names of their employees. So how are they going to focus on this, quote, culture of thriving? No, that's irrelevant to most people. Most people just want to get paid fairly. And that's it. But, you know, tell me what you guys think. Please leave a comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Have a good day, night, morning, evening, wherever you're at in this world. Peace and love always. Stay safe out there, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye.